Hello, I am coming to you candle lit, also with a ring light. My camera is balancing on my iPhone and a box of environmentally friendly Clorox wipes. I think that the paired back runways over the last couple of seasons will lead us into a 2010s detail blogging resurgence and I could not be more excited about it. Um, we'll start with why do I think that or we'll start with what that means and then we'll go into why I think that and then I think we'll go into what the outcome will be. Okay, so what I'm referring to is in the 2000s, like late 2000s into the 2010s, there was a ton of fashion blogging, whether that was on Blogspot or moved to the Tumblr space, which is a long form blogging website. People were on the internet talking about fashion. It was everywhere. Once we moved into Tumblr, especially in 2014, kind of 15 and 16 <laughs> detailed blog sites were like literally the tops and the reason why was it had a lot to do with lacking context which is like effortlessness coolness lacking context lacking an explanation for the images detailed blogging refers to a style of blogging on tumblr in 2014 as a result of style.com and vogue runway archives um, where you would post close-up detail shots of humans wearing a garment or a human with a makeup style on. And it is different than object blogging, which is when you would take an e-commerce style photo of an accessory or garment laid flat on a white background. They would be close-ups of the details in the garments on the runway instead. Um, this was at the height of Jack Moose, American Apparel matching sets. They reigned supreme. J.W. Anderson reigned supreme. Matching two-piece sets and swimwear made out of neoprene especially so that you could see the zigzag stitches in the pieces. So it would be like matching all one color looks. Very stark, bright white details. The emphasis was on cleanliness um, and construction. And you could see how things were made. So a lot of object blogging involved mesh garments so you could see like the inside of the construction and a lot of detail blogging involved very close-up shots of like top stitching of different items and you can do this with non-fashion items which a lot of people did as well alongside fashion items Um, and so people would share close-up images of one aspect of the runway and then just tag it maybe the designer in the season no explanation of like where this comes from what it means what the impact is the rest of how the look appeared it literally would just be like a close-up of a bracelet a close-up of the lips a close-up of the makeup and hair like portrait headshots of the model that have nothing to do with communicating what the designer, you know, was creating when they were constructing the collection, but they create a vibe and essence. Um, and they allowed bloggers to story tell through these very close up minimalistic shots. And a lot of the times it would be of like the Jill Sander, Raf Simmons at Jill Sander, Runway, Dion Lee, some sportier, like really Australian and Scandinavian, uh, fashion design, minimalistic, uh, chic, blanched, uh, <laughs> exclusive of diversity images that would allow bloggers to tell this very clean cut story on their blogs. Runway makeup in HD quality. And I've talked before about how Tumblr was a unique blogging platform in that the emphasis was on the quality of images because it was a photography based site much more than it was a fashion based site. Even though they became the centralized spot for cutting edge fashion, it was a photo centered platform. The reason why I emphasize that Tumblr is a photo-based platform is it makes it different than its counterpart Blogspot, um, Blogger.com, which was more centered on personality and storytelling and long-form text, even though both have the availability of that option. More than anything, that's why people would circulate images of high fashion runways, whether they were in the fashion space or not, just based on the quality of the images. This is what I mean by the 2010s detail blogging shots. Why I think that was important and what I think the value of that was, was people were paying attention to detail and quality of garments. Like I think at this point, a lot of people were talking about different fabrications and having expectations of fabrications. Um, Unfortunately, this happened right before we eased into like fast fashion, like marketing through influencers. But before that, people were so interested in neoprene as a fabric, like neoprene and 
garment construction and small details and stitching and top stitching because we were being presented with these up close images of the quality of construction that was being put into design and you're once you're confronted with it you develop these sensibilities and expectations around it so when you're using neoprene you do kind of have to cut really carefully and when you're doing these um more minimal design aesthetics you do have to cut really well and people are paying attention to really subtle nuances between cut and silhouette and tailoring rather than larger ideas or distracting um, garments right and hopefully with the um resurgence of that on the runway, the fashion image sharing space can shift into that. Now, the interesting thing is to me, <clears throat> I'd be like, it's so interesting. Everybody's like, is it? Um, but the interesting thing to me is that this is something that is, has some visibility on Pinterest, but I don't think it goes with the quality of photo. Um, and so people would go on these high quality image uploading websites and then bring those pictures to Tumblr. I don't really find that that is the same case with other image sharing sites where that's like emphasized or so important. I think immediacy is really important on places like Twitter. The moment the runway shows come out, people want to be the first person to upload it without context or background or information. And it's also not a long form blogging website like Tumblr. So it was, it's not so important on Twitter to have a long description explaining what something is as much as it's important to share something immediately, go viral or get engaged by the online fashion community there and make it so that these images are accessible to people. Um, and I think it would be valuable for us to shift into this mode, especially as recession is coming. I think what I've described before is that I feel like a lot of design exists mostly to show up in a way that is dynamic on a phone screen rather than show up in the consumer's life as a valuable piece that they can wear readily and be enchanted by. Like as long as it looks good on a phone screen, in an Instagram story or on an Instagram feed post, I think a lot of design, especially fast fashion has been put out over the last like 10 years for the purpose of, you know, standing out on a, on a, on a phone on a very small screen. And I, I think that that lowers customer expectations of quality and design and construction, which lowers people's expectations in the high fashion realm online. Since a lot of people cannot interact with high fashion in real life, they're interacting with the images and then going to the high street to buy the like knockoffs of the clothes or the thrift store. I think that that can kind of shift and change people's sensibilities around garments. And I think that the shift into detail oriented photography around fashion could be a huge improvement. So I would say that we saw this at Lueve, JW Anderson, Bottega, Prada men's, Prada women's, Miu Miu sort of, Coach sort of, uh, just generally offendy men's. A lot of these shows are paired back and have more attention to detail as far as tailoring and cut rather than attention to detail as far as creating these ultra dynamic crisscross Y2K industrial complex looking clothes. Like I think clothes are very minimal. I think you could even see this on Gauntlet Chang's runway at Eka Oslada at fashion brands like this, which these brands have a much more subdued um, perspective in general, but these really, really subdued sound by looking clothes. And I keep saying that because I'm looking for the word to describe what I see in these clothes. And to me, it is soundbite communication, but but um, yeah, I see it everywhere because that's what it feels like to me that he's trying to encompass a lot of ideas at once in these very minimal strikes where it's just like with this one short saying, you've communicated so much and we're taking that and running with it. I feel like with these clothes, we're, we can like expand on so much just from like a reflective bulb that JW Anderson puts down the runway. I'm like, okay, you said that and it says so much, I can go on for three hours about what it meant instead of having like a layered thing over something else that crisscrosses on top of this and then goes under this. And then you put on top of that a bag and then you pair it with this and that. It's like everything is super paired back. And I also connected to this to no necklaces and no jewelry on the red carpet. <laughs> um, and these really, really minimal looks, especially like think about the Prada wrinkled look. I think these looks are more symbolic than anything, which I really appreciate um, because I think that that captures the complexity of life. Like one, a symbol doesn't say everything, but it says a lot. And it also leaves a lot up for interpretation. Uh, compared to very like layered complex looks. I think that these looks are more simple. I wouldn't say that it's like 90s minimalism. I don't think it's as simple as 90s minimalism and I think it lacks some of that 
like romance and lightness. I think that these are a little bit more stern than a lot of 90s minimalism and like lack the romance of the 90s. Um, but I like that and I really appreciate it. And I think it shows great strength and I think it shows great practicality to have these kinds of looks on the runway and I really appreciate it. I think these looks are really practical. I understand that for people who are used to interacting with high fashion on a phone screen, these looks could be considered too subdued for their tastes. But to me, these clothes are practical and as we enter a recession, they're really <laughs> important. And that's why I'm hoping that this push into tumblers, Tumblr detail oriented shots in the high fashion space online as far as images, I'm hoping it'll push people into having higher expectations of quality, which is something I've also talked before about, where I do think because people are seeing uh, like the TikToker who cuts open leather bags and talks about the quality of construction and makes it accessible, like TikTokers like Andrea Chong, who talks about um, how you can look for high quality uh, in fast fashion stores or from sustainable brands, etc. I think that we are moving into this expectation of high quality from high fashion, of course, um, and uh, consumers having more power to expect and demand more. And I think that the clothes being practical means that they have to be comfortable, they have to be wearable, they have to be easily paired with other garments physically based on the terms of construction. And we are, we're going to be able to see more tweets and more um, commentary like that viral tweet about how the Shein men's suits are $25 and they look terrible. You are you know that they look terrible because you have to pay attention to the subtleties and the nuance, like the fit, the construction, the silhouette, the, the pulling and gathering at the seams that look like student work, etc., etc. All of those details are important and they're becoming increasingly important to the fashion public online and that's important to me and seeing these really paired back looks and like i've always referenced like taylor russell's style it feels very soundbite oriented the uh, ludwig de saint cernan last season show that i think kendall jenner was just seen in those things like being very very simple small communications uh, the Lueve big um, flowers and things like that. These really simple, straightforward strikes of communication I think are really important in like almost forcing people to care about quality of the construction of the clothes. The diesel belt skirt controversy, I think is a great example of it. I think because it's so simple, there was more for people to pick apart about the way that the garment was designed. But I think the expectation now that we're questioning the functionality when things get more simple is good. It's a good, um, expectation to me for people to be questioning their garments and the quality of their construction and their practicality as, again especially as we enter a recession this way they're not wasting the money the little money that they do have or the money that they want to preserve while we enter this time on trendy fleeting styles that won't even be relevant once we exit this recession they want to have things that they can maintain and have longevity style wise and construction wise and that's why i think it's good that we're entering this this era, I think it's the most practical thing to do. And I think it's something that a lot of people, myself included, have anticipated over the last two years that we were going to keep steering into this direction. And so I'm really happy about this, but let's move on to the outcome. Okay, to me, the outcome of this is I have concern about the high street interpreting this into capsule wardrobes of the 2010s again, which was a terrible time where the fast fashion brands would be ripping off what happened on the runway and they would be making their versions of these minimalist chic looks that were not well tailored, not well constructed, didn't last, were not made of high quality fabrications, and then selling them to people who couldn't really make use of them in the moment. And they're selling this idea that this is minimalism, this is chic, this is what high fashion is doing, and also this could be sustainable because you have a capsule wardrobe. And it's like, if people can't even make use of their capsule wardrobe, it isn't sustainable. If it doesn't have the ability to last and have longevity, it isn't sustainable. If it isn't cut well, and it isn't cut the same way as it is on the runway, it's just a vibe and interpretation of what's going on on the runway. It doesn't last and it isn't sustainable. And so that's one fear I have of the outcome of this. Um, another fear I have is that um, I think it's important to make weird clothes and I love practicality and there are brands that, high fashion brands that need to make practical clothes as a part of their brand legacy and their history and reinterpreting their own codes and um, appealing to a massive market, which is the job of many very high fashion brands to appeal to a broad audience, not to make like fringe aesthetic clothes. Um, I just don't want people to get lost in uh, the idea that everything has to look a really simple way, especially culturally and ethnically. I think it's important to see vibrance and color uh, for some people. It, 
in fashion not that they have to adopt those things if that's not for them but i do think it's important for people to see like aspects of different cultures and how they interpret like life and joy and how they react to a recession it's not it's not necessarily the same as these like luxury european fashion houses that want to wear make subdued minimalistic like chic uh tailored uh, kind of solemn looking clothes. It's not necessary for everybody to look that way and having that kind of very dominating singular aesthetic to me is concerning uh, as far as like class and ethnicity inclusion. Um, and I think that it's beneficial that there are some runway shows that have looked very weird in the last couple of seasons and have not lost their weird edge. But I think on the other end of it, I think that it will increase fashion knowledge and literacy and increase people's ability to engage their own wardrobes if they're seeing these high fashion pieces uh, up close and seeing details and seeing the ways that things are constructed and having to do more research because there is less of a broad interpretation like just posting a head-to-toe look you maybe don't have to look into oh what were the buttons made of uh what uh cut is this oh they put this little accent on the bottom of the blah 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 like when you start having to see up close details i think it encourages people to do more research on why things were done or what things were done it's important it increases like fashion knowledge and fashion literacy and that's my hope for this i do think in the tumblr era it did increase people's knowledge and awareness of certain fabric and where these kind of things originate from and it introduced people to a lot of fashion that I think would be valuable to be reintroduced to the fashion online community right now. Hopefully we're talking a little bit more in detail about these looks rather than catching a vibe. Uh, that's like the best possible outcome and I'm excited to see it and if it doesn't happen, oh well. <laughs> like, but I do think it will. And yeah, so this was my video for today. I love you all. It was quite fun. I have a little bit more labor intensive theory video coming in the next probably four days. And yeah, I hope everybody enjoys their day. I actually have a stomach ache as usual.